The um, original house actually was a was a garage originally. Yeah. And it was converted to a house, and then this was added. The Vitamix headquarters is a trip. You know, most people say Vitamix is based out of Cleveland, Ohio, but it's in Northeast Ohio. It's Olmsted Falls or Olmsted Township, whatever you want to call it. And the drive there from the airport is like you're stuck in the 1940s, which is exactly when they originally set up shop on the 12 acres that the family bought to focus solely on their direct mail business. The first infomercial, nobody knew that a blender could be used for health. Right. You know, right. used it for a few things in bars and so forth, and he basically brought that whole concept out. It's incredible. And they still have that original log cabin, the original office, the place where they developed all these recipes and, and built the business, built the infomercial. And I'll show you that in a second. And that's where stuck in time kind of stops. You go along this driveway and it looks like an alien spaceship from Planet Blender. It's this ginormous modern cathedral of blending equipment innovation that's filled with and surrounded by historical artifacts. So you have the history and you have the present and you have building towards the future. And there's more sort of these like dichotomies, these these forces that push and pull on each other all throughout Vitamix headquarters. Let me show you. 10 things. First of all, the Ruth Barnard Culinary Center. So inside the main entrance of Vitamix headquarters, you walk through and you see this giant fish bowl. It's a floor to ceiling glass enclosed kitchen. Basically, it's where they create and test all the recipes that you see in today's cookbooks and on their website. It's a state-of-the-art facility with giant walk-ins. Christopher Walken. Should we, should we walk it? in? Yeah, I know, walk in the Christopher Walken, right? Sous vide cookers, I don't know if I said that right. Ranges, it was like a zillion outlets for all the blenders that they have to hook up for uh, US power and uh, uh, European Union power. There's like five ice machines, each with a specific type of ice that their commercial customers use and ones that they expect the household uh, users to use. Our creme de la creme, the mini cuber. Ooh. That's a good ice. And so the culinary center is massive. Like here's Shava with, with Chef Matt making a salsa. You can see them up close, looks kind of small, but if you back way up, you can see like they're tiny inside of this huge space. So the chefs are in here cooking and innovating and creating. There's a huge team, but that's not where it started. And so they used to make their recipe books, just like Shalv and I make recipes in our family's kitchen. And I'll show you that in a second. But first, this is the log cabin, the Barnard family log cabin, thing number two. So this was the house and it started as a garage and then they eventually converted it. Yeah, this thing was built by hand by second generation CEO, son of Papa Barnard, Bill Barnard. And Bill built it all by hand, just getting input from the different people at the lumber yard. Cool. Before they had YouTube where you could like look up and how to build stuff, he went to the hardware stores and asked people how to how to do it. And uh, yeah, they've recently restored it and it looks and feels just like it did when it was the 1940s. It's stuck in time. But this is where the family lived and ran the business. Okay, back to the kitchen. This is thing number three. This is the original Vitamix Culinary Center. This was the family's kitchen where Ruth Barnard created the original recipes for the original cookbooks. This is the kitchen inside the log cabin exactly as it was in the 1940s. You got the old fridge and the old toaster and of course the vintage Vitamix sitting on the counter. Did you know that the first uh, infomercial ever was for Vitamix? Well, they wrote and tested that infomercial uh, right here, right in the, in the log cabin. It's it's from 1949 and it's absolutely wild. You, you gotta see it, I'll put a link to it up here. And, uh, and I'm just thinking now, if if Pop Barnard it. knew that, that people would call his work what he did uh, an influencer or a creator, he'd be like, that's ridiculous. He'd be like, what? No, I'm a blender salesman. Invented. The Vitamix machine. But his influence was for good reason. And the business began in 1921 as door-to-door -door sales. And he really sold mostly can openers. And that was just the beginning. They sold cuckoo clocks. They have a cuckoo clock inside of the house to as memorabilia for that stage in their selling life. But after a health scare in the family, after a chronic illness with a father-in-law. Hey, it's Shalva, and this is an ad for our queso. Make some today, especially if you haven't already, at Life is no yolk forward slash queso. They worked to really change the focus of the business, to focus on whole food health. And this is number four. Inside of Vitamix headquarters, everything is whole food nutrition. Yes, they make mixing equipment that is in your favorite quick serve ice cream shop that makes you ice cream mixed with candy. 
they make machines that make the cold coffee drinks. And the best margarita you've ever had was probably made in a Vitamix. But the idea of whole food nutrition is everywhere. It's on the walls, it's on the PowerPoints, it's even in the boardroom. The strategic decisions are still made based on, we need to remember why we're doing this. And it's to promote whole food nutrition. Now they actually named the business Natural Foods Institute. It was, the, their whole thing was selling vitamins and natural foods. And oh, by the way, we can sell you a blender. Hang on to the past build for the future. And I don't know if it's intentional or not, but there's something throwback, sort of retro, about the location of the repair center. And that's number five. The repair center is like just a few steps from the corporate offices, and it's tiny. This little area is like part garage, like re repair garage. Is that an air gun? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> But on the other hand, it's almost like an operating room in how clean it is. And it just, it feels like, not sterile, but crisp. Thank you for So cool, and you have all the vintage vitamins? Yeah, we have there? the vintage. Because <laughs> you still service the vintage ones? Yeah, uh, some of them. Like, um, not bad. <laughs> not bad. Um, like these right here. Those we do. Yeah. They still get parts for machines from decades ago? 70s and the 60s. <laughs> yeah, we don't know much before the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> to put that into perspective, these are 20, 30, 40 year old machines that they still service to this day. My watch, my running watch, broke. It started vibrating incessantly, it wouldn't stop. Four year old watch, I called the company and said, hey, can you guys fix it? And they say, no, we no longer service that model. Four years. And Vitamix is servicing machines that are 40 years old. It's back to the repair center. They say they service about 90 machines per day. We can do like 90 or 100. 90 to 100. With a fully staffed team of four, four people doing repairs. That might seem like a lot, but there's something like 5 million Vitamix, Vitamix machines like out there in household. As a helpful aside, here are two tips for avoiding having to send in your machine for warranty service. Yeah, like who cares? Like they'll send you a shipping label when it's free to do, but nobody wants to be away from their Vitamix. What they wear out more is the drivers. It, it's from pulling the container off too early yeah. before it stops. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's actually a really good hack is make sure that you leave the container on until it's fully dug to not wear out the drive side. I didn't know that. I pull mine off all the time. Mid yeah. when it's spinning? Yeah. Huh. Not when it's spinning, but like before it's like completely stopped. Yeah, you do that it's all okay. the time. It's okay. You're keeping these guys in the jets. Yeah, there we go. So you wait till it's all done blending to take the container off. And then also, yeah, use the tamper. Use the tamper. No one likes to use the tamper. The tamper's your friend. And it's pretty counterintuitive that you should use a stick to jam ingredients into the blade. and let it make an awful noise, but it's actually better for it, assuming it's on high speed, than to just sit there and chug along without having any movement of the ingredients. Use the tamper, it helps the motor. Hey, it's Shava again, and if you're hearing this, it means you're not making our queso, so go make some at life is no yoke forward slash queso. All right, let's go back to the break room, and I wanna show you number six, the big rotunda. Basically, it's this ginormous room right when you walk into headquarters, they hold community events, obviously all hands meetings. It's a, it's a gathering space. I mean, you could have a wedding reception there, but I'm not sure who would wanna have a blender at their wedding reception. I just, I can't imagine who would. But like most offices these days, the space is a little underutilized. We had lunch there in our last visit. All right, let's head back to the production area. This is item number Sharon. They actually have a production facility a few miles away that, I guess what's interesting is that at the big production facility, it's an enormous building. Like racks of stuff like all the way to the ceiling 30 40 feet in the air what's interesting is the size of the lines they aren't that long like 10 20 feet long and the quantity of lines there's like five or six maybe seven different lines and what you'll notice is that robots do some of the work like they work with some of the like the blade assemblies getting those put together but it's still almost an entirely hands-on, human-driven process. Build the base, install the motor, install the motherboard, hook it all up, fix the blade to the container. This is where they use a machine because as you probably know, the, mach the blade is fixed to the container. You can't remove it. They test it, it goes through QA, box it up, and it's ready to go. 
Hey, hey, d d did you tell them that this is when people that order their Vitamix through our website get their machines? Like, right now? Well, no. Y you gotta tell them. Uh, okay. Well, so they shop at Vitamix.com and fill out their cart, and then they go back to our website, lifeisnoyoke.com, and click the little link that says, uh, Life is no yolk sent me. And yeah, then, and then that link tells Vitamix that we sent them. And then, and then don't forget to tell them that when they notify us of our order, of their order, they go to the, our website, lifeisnoyolk.com slash notify, they will get our ebook, and then now this is kind of new, and all access pass to all of our programs, our, our classes, our, our programs, everything. Did, did you tell them that? Yeah, I got it. We got it. Did, did you make it clear that the, the what they're getting is fresh off the line? Like, did you show that? Yeah, I think they got it. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, did, you, did you thank them for supporting our work? Yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Something cool about the production center. Like, how do you know the best way to make these things? How do you know the best process, the most efficient, the way that's the safest and is the best use of everyone's time that's gonna make everyone the happiest and really is just a, an ever evolving system? Well, they use, I think it's called Six Sigma, but specifically, we learned about this at a visit a few years ago. They pretty much have suggestion boxes all around the production center. And this helps them figure out big stuff and little stuff like, okay, you take the blue wire and hook it up before the red wire because that way the red wire is easier to get in. You don't have to go around, it doesn't get tangled. Little things like that, but also for small stuff, like we should have brooms at the end of each line because we have to sweep in that area. And right now they're all in a broom closet. So we have to walk all the way to the broom closet. It takes us a ton of time. We have to walk back, clean up the end of the line and then take the broom and put it back. Let's just have a broom sitting at the end, little stuff like that. And so when people on the team make a suggestion and it ends up getting implemented, they get rewarded, they get their picture up on the wall. And it's a way to, to make the system really efficient and continuously improving. And it gives uh, the, the, the folks that are there, that work there, that are part of this team, ownership of, of the process and of the company. And so really anyone that has a team that works to, to make something or is a, in the service business, if you have like a dentist office, that's a great way to, to, to continuously make things a little better. I like that. I really like that. All right, back to the offices. This is number eight. This is a shocker. There's blenders everywhere. And they're almost like on display, like trophies. When you walk into the culinary center, there's a, a display case of blenders in the boardroom. And I get it, like this is this is what they do. These things take years of, of testing and engineering to come up with, and it's something they should be proud of. And that's number nine. Throughout Vitamix headquarters, inside there are secret testing rooms. Yeah. yeah. What's the name of this room? That's a secret we testing room. Probably here. won't show that. Yeah. That's the secret room. That's the see. That's the secret room. This that's is the, the secret room. The off limits room, right? There's another one in the back of the production center, like way, 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 way back. It's this is where like the engineers hang out, and I had a chance to visit there one time. I put together a video, but I never uploaded it. I had to go to their legal department to make sure that we weren't revealing any trade secrets or whatever. And I never heard back from legal. So I'm gonna show you a tiny little clip. Hopefully they don't make me take down the video, but basically this is an area where they test. They'll, they'll put in pine blocks inside of machines to test the durability of the blade. And they'll also put in corn kernels to test. Corn kernels are like the hardest possible thing that you can blend. And then number 10, something you can't miss when you're at Vitamix headquarters. Inside, there are curated displays of history throughout. From road shows as a family to the original infomercial from 1949, to commercial expansion, to international expansion, from the original Vitamix in 1937, from the Vitamix 3600, the 5200, to the G series, to Ascent, to the food processor attachment, from Papa to Bill, to Grover, to John, to Jody. Four generations, 100 years of history. It's dedicated to its past as much as it's grown to foster future innovation and growth. Guys, they're so dedicated to keeping their why in mind and preserving history and reminding people of the importance of whole food nutrition and the history and where they came from that they're actually building a museum a little bit in between the main headquarters, the huge 
blender spaceship and the log cabin. Our next visit we'll be able to see it and we'll uh, show you around the, the new Vitamix Museum. And guys, uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell to get notified. And if you appreciate videos like this, Here. hit that yeah. thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Here we are. And we'll see you in the next one. We did it. Bye, guys. Yay. Yay. All right. Bye, you guys.